today on Dagen Lisa, it's all about parenting and saving money while parenting. We have a doula, a single mother, and the mastermind behind an Akanagan group called Mamas for Mamas. All right, now we're joined by our first guest, Amanda Martin, uh, with Dona. Dona, so tell yeah. Tell us what Dona is. Dona is uh, Doulas of North America, and it's a training organization for doulas. So I've uh, certified with them as a birth doula, and I've trained as a postpartum doula. For people that don't know what a doula is, I know lots of people are like, is it some kind of witchcraft? Or yeah. like, can you just explain what the facts are versus the fallacies about being a doula? Um, a doula is not a midwife. So we don't actually deliver the baby or catch the baby or anything like that. We don't do any of the med medical stuff. Um, and so we just do a lot of um, emotional, informational, educational support for families as they're having the babies and after. Well, that sounds like a, a, a pretty valuable uh, thing. I, I, I've been through uh, three of my own kids and two grandkids so far, so yeah. that, there's a lot of information that people need and emotional. Are you the, were you the daddy doula? Is it the daddy doula? I, I was in the delivery room for, for all of them. Um, and you're still in one piece. And I'm still in one piece. Well, yeah, I have to say that um, <laughs> things can go very different from one birth to another. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I've been to 19 births and they've wow. all been so different. What led you to want to do this? Um, well, I had my two babies and they were really good experiences. So, you know, you have so many people saying that they're just terrible, awful, painful, you know, awful right. experiences. And I just came out of my births going, wow, like, wow, like I did that. It's amazing. Empowering. And, uh, empowering, And lots yeah. of women are afraid to share good birth stories yes. because they don't want to offend, um, you know, parents who might have been through a, tra a like, traumatic birth. Yeah. And but there all, are so many good stories. And it's all true for each of us, right? right? So, yeah, a lot of people say, like, oh, wow, you know, well, you couldn't have done it without pain medication. Like, how could you say it was a, a good experience without pain medication? And it's like, well, it was for me, mm -hmm. you know? And so uh, I, it's totally valid for other people to say that you know, I had a really awful experience or it was really even traumatizing, but that's my experience. Part of the doula role is to just support those choices, to help educate, go here, here's the options, you know, here's A, B, C, or D, and you know, what do you want to do? Um, and then support those choices. So, you know, a lot of people, a lot of it is helping with birth plans and a plan is a plan but it doesn't always go that way. But it's great right. to know that this mom prefers these things and to help them um, to help them push for those options. So. Well, it must be great to have a place to go that, that provides sort of an unbiased um, source of, of, you know, valid, real information as opposed mm -hmm. to like, because you're right, I mean, you hear like mm -hmm. uh, never ending stories about you know, but they're all anecdotal. They're all about this one incident yeah. and another incident, or somebody said that somebody did. So, um, I mean, I, I know that we did a lot of research uh, before we had, you know, before we had our births, and um, we, I was just there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's a big support. Having that, that support is huge. Well, how do you deal with dads? Uh, that's a good question because it's sit down over there. Yeah, like <laughs> no, because it's it's changed also with the way that we deal with dads because before like back in the day the dads were at the bar and when they get on the phone they're like oh the baby's coming you know, buy a round for everybody and like the dad wasn't even involved what yeah yeah i know i don't know where you how you got missed out of that deal i had to sit in the hospital but okay. you were there right and so how do how do you include the men in the whole birthing process as a doula and like how did like what what's their role when they're and it's it's very individual and to, for a lot of men it's not comfortable um i've been to birth where the dad wasn't even in the city, he was working, right? But he didn't have any notion to be there. He didn't want to be there. He was there for his first, and he was like, that's enough for me, Check, thank please. you. <laughs> um, yeah, and the wife was like, you know what, it was stressful having him there. I was worried about him the whole time, yeah. right? So, um, you know, just wanted support for herself and to have somebody that was only worried about her. And that's fine, and that's great. And there are dads who are like right in there and they're like massaging feet and what can I get you? And that's great. In those cases, my job is to help support them right. and be like, okay, well, you know, we've tried this. It seems like things are shifting. Maybe we should try moving. Um, encourage, you know, encourage the dad to encourage the mom to get up and move or here, try massaging over here. I'll get you guys some water. Do you need a break? Like I can do that while you go the bathroom 
like labor takes a long time. It can be hours. So do you need to go to the bathroom? Does the <laughs> dad, dad need a break? Does he need some food to recharge? Let's see a glass of wine. So, yeah. <laughs> no, no, sure no, 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 no wine. <laughs> no whining. No whining. Yeah, yeah. So it's really just supporting that and what the dad's comfortable with. Like my cousin, one of my cousins was like, you know, he just stood in the corner like a deer in the headlights doing nothing. Like she was like, where were you? And I was like, I told you I trained as a doula. I just didn't want to push it, right? So well, I know with my husband, I, I had written out a birth plan and I, and I gave it to my midwife and I gave it to my husband. He didn't read it. So in between my contractions, I'm giving him directions. I'm like, okay, the the the, the onesies over there, and then the, you know you know can you get the hot cloths and put them in the the cooker, whatever yeah. the slow. We I mean, had these little cloths for the slow cooker. Yeah. All these things when you have a home birth that you do, you know, right. get the towels ready right. or this and that is. And so in between each contraction, I'm giving him directions, and I'm I'm getting angry while I'm <laughs> I'm giving birth. I'm like, you didn't read my birthing plan. Yeah, well, read I mean, the plan. Yeah. <laughs> the plan. Read the plan. This is a no. <laughs> Take it, Marcus. Well, well, yeah, and I mean, the plan, I like to tell my clients that the plan is really a discussion. Mm -hmm. It's not so much, it's not a magical piece of paper. It's not a shield that's going to protect you from things that you don't want right. or that might need to happen. You know, just because you have a birth plan doesn't mean you might not need a cesarean um, at the end of all things. So, um, but it's a discussion. It's saying, talking to your doctor, tar talking to your partner and your doula and going, okay, you know, what are my options? You know, back pain is... Um, something that comes up for a lot of women. So um, does my doula have a TENS unit? That can help with back pain. Right. Does the hospital, does my doctor offer, offer um, sterile water injections for back pain? Like these, so it's a discussion. It's going back to your doctor going, well, um, I've heard from other moms that they've had this happen or that happen. Like what are our options here sort of thing. Right. So yeah, it really is a discussion. And for dads time. to be involved too, because when you are giving birth, you kind of lose some of your, you, you, you forget things about what, what your needs are. That's why I think a birthing plan is important. Sometimes not being asked and involved in the process is what's really scary and traumatic for the moms more than right. having things happen. It's having them happen without knowing right. or, or, consent. or consent. You know, for our first, we, we you know, gone to the classes and, and had like a birth plan and wanted to have like a, a natural birth. Um, and uh, the labor went on for quite a while, like 20 mm -hmm. hours or something. And, uh, and, then, and then the baby started getting into distress, so then things mm -hmm. sort of shifted and they had to do like an emergency C-section and all that kind of mm -hmm. thing. So it was, you know, it was like a lot of, you know, here's the plan, here's what's happening now. You know, we did have a friend who was studying to be a doula actually yeah. uh, with us. Um, so, so she was a big help as well. So, awesome. so it was it was really good to have that um, extra support in there because because mm -hmm. you know you, you know it's when your loved one is in this you know kind of really tense and painful and and, and traumatic potentially situation. It's mm -hmm. good to have somebody else there, a third party that's kind of like one step removed that can keep their head. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. we called my my best friend and she came over and we call her Paula Abdullah <laughs> because she's not really a doula, but we just were like, my husband's like, uh, Nina, do you think you could come over and help? And she's like, sure. She comes over and she was like rubbing my back and taking care of me. So like being in that moment with a mom and being able to, you know, help her like do something so incredible. How does that feel like as a doula? I mean, it's, it's amazing. Like I often go home and it can be three in the morning and I, you know, drove home so tired and I sit down and I'm wired. You know, like you can't sleep. Adrenaline? It's like yeah, adrenaline and just excitement for the family and it's just such an amazing experience to, to be able to do that and help families and yeah, So for people that want to have a doula, mm -hmm. um, what, how do they even go about finding a doula? Um, well, I mean, a lot of people go to Google. Um, I'm part of the Kelowna Doula Association, and um, it's a group of local doulas that um, are helping each other, supporting each other with uh, education and um, just support, backup doulas. How long do you like get to know the moms and the parents before you actually go help deliver? Um, it depends when they contact you. I've had clients hire me at six weeks, and I've had clients hire me the day before they were induced. So. Um, it really depends on how much how much time we're going in, Amanda. Get down yeah. here. Yeah, and I've heard of um, some women know that they're trying to get pregnant, and they hire their doula before they're even pregnant. They go, "No, I know I want a doula," and they just do all their research. Those are like the ones that buy the wedding dress two day, two years before they even yeah. get engaged. Oh, right? before they meet a guy. Before they meet a guy, it's like, yeah, I got <laughs> the whole one. Yeah. Yeah. One day. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, awesome. so I mean, it just depends on the person. So thank you so much for coming on and talking to us thank about you it. For me. It's uh, it's it's great that there's such fantastic resources for people out there. Awesome. Thanks. Support for moms. <laughs> That's what it's about. Coming up, she was a single mom who mastered the art of couponing. Mika Mitchell talks with Doug and Lisa about some smart ways to save money. We're back with Mika Mitchell. She's a mother of two. And we're going to just discuss some options for moms that, you know, because being a parent is expensive. Can Absolutely, be expensive. Absolutely, it can be. You know, a lot of people I see, they're like, oh, I'm a single parent, I need this and this and this. And I, you think, how, you know, how do you even get by when you have to take care of all these different needs for the children? So I know there are a lot of good resources in communities like the Okanagan and Kelowna. Mm -hmm. um, so what kinds of resources did you find helpful? I found the food bank actually to be extremely helpful. Um, just going in and they always have huge stacks of diapers there. They had formula for you already. And every Friday they did a baby bundle for any mothers with babies under a year old. And every Friday you could come in and get a hamper full of diapers, wipes, formula, and milk. Did you go through that stuff fast? Absolutely. Formula um, lasted me about two weeks. For a big container, lasted about two weeks, and one container was about between twenty and thirty dollars. And I know diapers. Like oh. I'm always like looking for coupons because like Superstore will have like you know them on for like thirty dollars. Absolutely. Like, oh my gosh, like th things that I never thought I'd get excited about. I was like. <laughs> Yes, diapers. So. Diaper sales. You get you wait for them. That's the thing. That's what I ended up doing was signing up for a lot of the websites to get the flyers sent to me so I could wait for the good deal so I could save money that way. Mm -hmm. So what other ways were you, did, you, did you discover? Uh, coupons? 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 Coupons were absolutely amazing. One of my friends taught me actually how to hardcore coupon like you saw on TV and oh, whatnot. The and shows? Yes, I was taught how to do that. I did that for the first two years with my son just really? to save money. Yeah. Extreme couponing. Oh yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> so, like, but how, I saved many... so much money that way. Way, actually, I ended up saving two hundred dollars in a year just by using coupons. Wow! So how, how many coupons would you take in at a time? Like, like My the most I ever took in was thirty, and that was the last wow. time because I was at the till for a very long time, <laughs> and I was like, "This is really awkward now." So were 30, people cheering you yeah. on? No. Oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> Everybody was like, "Like, how do you have time for this?" I'm like, "I'm a single mom. When he's sleeping, this is what I do. I cut out coupons." Yeah. I wasn't sure because I see I've seen those extreme couponing shows, and I think, "Oh, well, that's made in the states, or that's so and so." But it's actually, it works here. It works. You just got to be careful because, like, some of them, um, once you get so many coupons, they start catching on that you're doing this, and then you have to read the back of the coupons because sometimes you can only use that coupon once. You can't double up with coupons. So, what were some of the other things that you, uh, some other advice you might have for the thrifty parent out there? I definitely say use your community as much as you can, including the food bank. Like, don't just look at it that just like poverty parents need it. Use it because it also cuts back on your groceries. Like going to the food bank, I was able to get more fresh fruit because fruit's very expensive. Right. By going to the food bank, you can get your fresh fruits there and then buy the other stuff at the grocery store and then you have more money towards diapers and formula. So I ended up stocking up that way by going to the food bank, cutting back on groceries so that I could spend more on groceries at the same time to stock up. So a lot of people say, well, stuff at the at food banks um, around the world, it's not not very nutritious, there's not very many options for moms, but you're saying they're, they're like there's fresh fruit and vegetables? I got lots of fresh fruit and vegetables, and the minute I got home, because it won't last long, it is from the food bank, so it does expire, I made baby food out of it. I pureed it right away, put it into baby food jars, and put it in my freezer. I like making baby food. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. I don't think I've ever made baby food on purpose. A baby bullet is my best friend. Yes. I mean, I use that and I just, my son just chugs it back. Like, he, right out of the bullet, I just blend some stuff up and... You can blend anything. <laughs> <laughs> you can. Just anything goes in. Now, for being a single parent, I mean, I'm not a single parent, but I, I do, I still find it hard to juggle, um, you know, doing stuff for myself and, you know, even coming here and working and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, how did you get by as a single parent? Um, I lived, um, luckily for me I had family in town and for me I lived in an apartment building where my mom lived in the same apartment building as me. Oh, so I lucked out that way but there were times where I, were, I was by myself. Like my son was very colicky too. So for the first three months his favorite thing to do was scream. Oh, that's fun. So I had to do that by myself too and there was days where I didn't sleep and I'd have to call my mom just, I'm like, just come over for like three hours, I just need to sleep and she'd come over after work, watch the baby just so I can sleep. For me, just how often my baby fed every hour and a half. I was like, how is this possible? Like, you know, it's like, it's two in the morning, it's four in the morning, it's six in the morning, you know, and you just, for the first few months, I just, that's all I did. I felt like it was just one human milk machine. 
that's what I felt like for the longest time. Because I was doing it all by myself. Like, nobody was helping me. And I'm like, man, really? Is this all I'm set to do? <laughs> like, is that <laughs> it? They grow I'm just, just going to feed the baby. That's it. That's all I'm good for. And then after that month, everything was fine after that. I always found the first month to be the hardest. And yeah. nobody told me that. And, and the first month of the first kid is, is the strangest part because you really don't know what to expect. You don't know what's going on. Like every little thing they do is like, ah! <laughs> well, my biggest thing was um, the first time, because I had a home birth, and leaving the house and putting him in the car seat for the first time, first of all, I had no idea how to work the car seat. I still don't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, change the, they change them all the time. Well, they, they do. They, they really rules. do. New designs, right? Well, and just, draw, I, I went to Walmart. My sister's like, Lisa, you have to get out of your house. And I'm like, oh, fine, because she's like thinking I'm going to get postpartum because I wouldn't leave my house. And so I'm like, fine, I'm going to go on an adventure. I packed him up. I took him to Walmart. Breakdown. He's crying. I'm crying. We're in the bathroom of Walmart. And like, it was just a complete disaster. I didn't know how to put him back in the car seat. I, and I had to pull over the car like 10 times because I wanted to see if he was breathing. Yes. You know, because yes. you, just, you just don't know. It's just silence behind you. And it's terrifying. He stopped crying. There must be something wrong. <laughs> right? So there's just so many things that you just don't know until it's Exactly. There. And with my son, he ended up, um, he was born three weeks early. So that Surprise. was a huge <laughs> shock too, because I didn't have, I didn't bring any of my birthing stuff with me. I just kind of woke up and I'm like, I don't feel okay. So my mom drove me straight to the hospital. I got there like, yeah, you're, you're nine yeah, centimeters no. dilated. It's time to go. And I was like, no. No, no. Wait, <laughs> yeah, wait, basically wait. I was like, I can't, I can't do this. They're so like, no, no, you got this. I was like, do we have time for anything? They're like, no, I'm sorry. It was natural and it was the easiest thing I've ever done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's like parents everywhere that are hating you right <laughs> yeah. now. I know, and I was, I was actually terrified. As soon as I got to the hospital, my mother literally had to drag me into the elevator. She's like, you can do this. And I'm like, no, no, have you seen the size of me? And I'm like, I can't do this. It's going to destroy me. But How much did he weigh? He was 6 pounds, 11 ounces. Okay. Not bad for being three weeks early. Yeah. Um, and we were allowed to go the next day, too. There was nothing wrong with him either. So The resources in the community. Besides the food bank and stuff, like what about programs? Have you used any of the programs like Baby Time? I yeah. loved Story Time at the library. That was really nice too. Um, I found it really hard going out in the community sometimes because a lot of the programs they do have are at churches. Right. And being a single parent at a church, it was hard sometimes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Just the looks you'd get because you're a single mom with a kid and you're by yourself. Because I was 19 when I had my son. Mm. So going out into the community sometimes I did get some... That doesn't sound like a very good church to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's the religion, right? You're supposed to be married and, and then have a baby. And yeah. unfortunately, with today's society, we're all doing things a little backwards. So right. um, it was a little hard that way going out in the community. But I also found social media to be a huge help that way. Mm -hmm. And having like Kelowna meetups for moms and meeting moms that way. Because a lot of moms are nervous to go out into the public with their child. And I can completely understand that. Right. So by having the social media is a great way we ended up connecting. And it was a good way for me to make friends who had kids around my age too right so well that's another guest we, we have on um, she's our next guest um, is mamas for mamas yes and it's an amazing tool for moms I mean Facebook people can say whatever they want about social media and stuff but I mean I, anyone, I love Facebook really? <laughs> it's my favorite Instagram is my favorite actually but Facebook, I mean, there's all these groups for moms and absolutely, Mamas for Mamas is it no money's exchanged. I all just used it the other day, actually, um, to get clothes because clothes is expensive, not yeah. just for myself but for my kids. But this girl was like, I have clothes for a mom. I want a playpen. I'm like, I've had a playpen sitting in my house for two years. I'll trade you. Win win. Exactly. And so just programs and, and, and this is in, in all cities is, is um, things like this that are available. You just go look for them, like Kelowna moms. Or absolutely. Moms for just mamas type it into Facebook things. in the search bar of your city and usually if they haven't started it start it yourself yeah and it's great I really enjoy social media just for that it's yeah. a lot easier it's nice because it's community helping the community more mm -hmm. thanks so much for coming in thank you, thank so, you so much, much. coming up we we'll started as a handful of moms sharing baby stuff has now become a countrywide nonprofit Shannon Christensen of mamas for mamas John Doug and Lisa next we're back with Shannon Christensen, and she is the founder of Mamas for Mamas. That's right. We started it in April of 2014, and okay. it's growing steadily. And for people who don't know about it. Like yeah, this sounds like, at least I mentioned a little bit, of, uh, it sounds like a great idea, but explain it maybe. Well, it's really neat, actually. It's a platform where everybody, all moms, can join um, a common cause and get together and um, trade, donate, support, and connect. And what that means is 
just how it sounds. If you have something and you don't need it anymore, you can pass it off to a mom who you know will use it and appreciate it, and there's no money that exchanges hands. Wow. There's enough things that we need to spend money on. We spend enough of our time working to pay for these things. I think it's time to spend that time with our children if we can, and this group allows that. And it's good for moms to just, I'm part of the group, obviously. You're a mom? I'm One a of mom. the first members. Was I? You were. Oh my gosh, we should have like a celebration or something. Yes, do I get should. something? Do you have like a membership card with your number yeah. on it? Yeah, oh, Costco. Ooh, we could do that. <laughs> we should, I, I like it. And, and I know I've had three kids and a couple of grandkids, so I know you know that you go through stuff and as they go through stages, you, do, you got this, you don't need it anymore, and then you're looking at the next thing that, you're, that your child needs. And, exactly. And, and to go get a new one every time just seems... It's wow, very expensive. It's very expensive. It's very expensive and it's time consuming and you know when you come to look at the big picture, we need community. More than we need things, mm -hmm. we need a sense of community. And this gives us both. It gives us the things that we need in a setting where we know we're being supported. Right. And you're going to have a little bit of drama with uh, with this many women, but it 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 isn't tolerated. It isn't accepted and therefore yeah. it doesn't flourish. And so the women that we have are all very like-minded, connected, beautiful souls who just want to help each other. Yeah, and it's not just stuff like I on the group. Like people will say, I'm "Not sure if this is mama-related," but you know, and then a cue advice like you exactly. know, on certain things. And I, some topics are hot. You know what? You're gonna have <laughs> like your, every parenting topic. Your vaccination, your circumcision, and your breastfeeding. But and even the car seat. Like I posted something on. I had no yeah. idea. I'm in Walmart, and I'm like, okay, well, I think I need a size two now or something. Is there an extra? Si is there next size? Like I'm a new mom. Yeah. And I have the first size, and my, my son's humongous. And so I'm like, so I just randomly posted on to the mama's group, and I said. Hey, what size of baby do you have to have for a size two? And then there was 70 comments. In like an hour, it blew up. It blew up, and because I was like, what? They've got passion. Because and they're like, well, no, you have to do it like rear facing because for as long as possible. And so you're yeah. going to have people who are 100% safety oriented, and you are going to have people who are 100% pop culture oriented, and then you're going to have those who do their research and meet in the middle. But every one of them has a valid opinion, yeah. and as long as they share it respectfully, we welcome it. So, what did you what did you come up with the idea? How did how did it evolve? It was, you know, the way I was raised was that you know you should never worry about how much your neighbor has unless you're making sure that they have enough, and that was largely because my nana and my mom were very much into helping other people. Um, but then it started when I was finishing up my master's in psychology, and I've been at a school which is very focused on social responsibility, mm -hmm. looking past what you're doing for yourself and your family right now and expanding it to the community you're part of. Mm -hmm. um, and the school I go to, the Adlerian School of Psychology, is all based in what, where do we find our meaning? And I was on Facebook one day doing something meaningless, of course, you know, as we do. What? And I came across this post on a free, free cycling kind of site and a woman was asking for food and for diapers and for some just some basic things that she needed for her baby and I kind of thought oh my gosh like is there nobody who is kind of providing this to each other and yeah the food bank is there and they're great and they do amazing work but you can only go once a month or once every couple of weeks or something mm -hmm. and there's specific needs you have to and there was very specific, specific things yes yeah, certain kinds of formula um, certain size of diapers or you know if you're gluten free I mean there's certain things that you know you don't choose to be celiac but sometimes it's a lot more expensive to live certain lifestyles to, to take care of your health so when I saw this woman having uh, trouble providing for her child I thought oh my gosh you know I have two little mouths that I feed and I've been in all sorts of different situations of plenty and of want and I just thought God you know can I do something is there something I can do so uh, we gathered about a hundred dollars worth of donations and we went to the store and we bought our groceries and the sense of commitment and community that I got from that it was a self a selfish act in a way that it made me feel good and I thought how many other moms could benefit from providing one little bit to another mom right. and how can we provide hope to somebody who's near home homelessness mm -hmm. somebody who's near um, you know not being able to buy diapers until Friday and it's Monday and they've got three left yeah. I mean imagining myself in that situation I thought well I would have sisters or my mom or my in-laws what if you don't have that mm -hmm. right. now you've got mamas what you're saying about you know if you're celiac and all those things mm -hmm. you know 
with moms, it's like maybe you want Pampers, maybe you prefer Pampers over right. Huggies, and and being Are able. You're just gonna start a whole new thread there what? On, the, on the site with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, it's not even. It's not <laughs> even controversial diapers. Yeah. No, some people prefer, it. but just giving them the choice. Like I know, like at the church that we go to in Kelowna, they make sure that. Um, I don't know. Have you heard of Metro? Downtown? Yes, I have. They serve the the homeless people mm -hmm. population. Mm -hmm. Once you go into Metro, it's like you feel like you're actually in a really nice coffee shop, and you can get your lattes and all this different stuff, because it's giving that. It's like. Oh well, they're they're homeless, so they should just take what they can get. Yes. But maybe they want a certain brand of coffee. Maybe yeah. they want a certain brand of diapers. You yeah. know, and and they should have that ability to have access to that if someone yeah. can give that. And I don't like the mentality beggars can't be choosers. First of all, no one's begging. Yeah. We all have dignity. Sometimes we just need help getting what we need. Yeah. And we shouldn't be judged on what we need and what we're asking for as long as we're doing it in a respectful way. Right. And like you said, and we have some moms who trade, I've got a sleeve of Pampers, baby can't use them for whatever reason, can I trade for Huggies? And there's so many who are happy to help. Well, and even like the, there was a one on the, I know the back is so like not a mama, your papa, but like <laughs> one, one of the threads um, just the other day was, um, a girl trying to trade Annie's mac and cheese for um, craft right. dinner, right? Her kids didn't like it. Yeah, but that's just like, that's the kind of thing. It's like you can... What, kids not like a specific that. food? <laughs> Who'd ever heard of such a thing? Yeah, you, you should know all about this stuff. This stuff. They'll eat it this month, they won't eat it next month. Exactly. And now you have somewhere to offload it. Yeah. And not Perfect. just that, you're not just donating it to the food bank or something, which is, which is great, but you're also getting what you need in return. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've had entire nurseries donated. You know, we've had full, you know, a crib and a rocking chair and a high chair and a stroller and a car seat. And it's like, you know, I'm sure you can have, find a mom who needs this. And yeah. I'm going, I could probably find six. Well, and the moms you will know? come together. Like, if some, someone's like, you know what, I, my check didn't come in this month, that my power is getting shut off and all this stuff. And then all these mamas just fly in and save the day. And they, yeah. it's, it's just the community, it, it, it's just such a heartwarming thing to see, like, all, everyone coming together to help it is. one person out. And it's social capital. You know, we have a lot of, you know, financial capital that we can kind of throw around and I always ask myself, you know, yeah, it's, you know, it's great to throw money at a problem, but what about putting your actual social capital into something, the people you know, the networks you've created, uh, you know, you can live on the same street as an MLA and have clout that you don't have uh, if you live on the same street as somebody who is next to homelessness. So right. for those who are struggling to have their power turned off, to have somebody who's friends with the MLA, and they can say, hey, let me talk to somebody for you. Let me see what I can do for you. Let me find you a, a loophole. Let me find you a way to make this happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're bringing people together who otherwise would have never met. Right. You have those making 8,000 a year and those making 180,000 a year. And they're all brought together. On one equal. On one, on one equal plane. And you're, you're giving the opportunity for these moms who don't have a whole lot to give back. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Some big changes happening for the Doug and Lisa show. Uh, we were doing a half an hour bi-weekly show. Now we're doing a one hour weekly show, which is more of a kind of variety feel. We're gonna have some entertainment, some music, interviews, be more like a nighttime talk show. So if you have any talent of any sort, or just wanna be a part of the show, you can drop us a line at Show at gmail.com. Our very first one hour format comes out next week and it includes people like George Miller of the Irish Rovers, who dares Doug in Ireland to do three different things. Um, we have Claudia from Global Television talking about her career, Carly Fittis from The Juice Morning Show talking about her life and career, and we also pitched The Doug and Lisa Show to Dragon's Den for one billion dollars. We will see if they go for it, and lots more coming up on DL, so shh.